Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I'm back with a game that was one of my favorites from last year, but they sent me a review copy of the newest release. This is Scorn Stockade, the second set for Kinfire Delve. If you didn't see my last coverage, this is, with one set, a one to two player cooperative game where you are playing unique cards from your player deck to battle these challenges, trying to get down through this well to face this evil boss. This one should be up for order pretty soon as of the airing of this video. And if you buy both this and the first set, you can play the game three to four player cooperative. And then there's another set coming, I think, by the end of this year that I'm sure we'll also do a video of. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. Like last month, I did some bonus videos relating to my top 100 series I've been doing, top 100 games of all time for me. You can also listen to our podcast for reviews and design discussions. An upcoming one we're planning is Peter and Jerry are going to react to my top 20 and share their own. And if you want to come and say hi and talk about the videos we make or anything else, come join our Discord. So last time I did a play of Kinfire Delve, I only played a single character, but you can play multi-handed solo. And honestly, my favorite way to play the game is co-op or multi-handed solo because I like how the characters kind of interplay with one another. So I'm using both characters doing a two-handed game, uh, both the characters from this new set. We have Fane Longstride, who is a bard, and he has the ability to discard certain cards to re-roll the dice you use in challenges, so he has some consistent mitigation abilities. And the other new character that I'm using is Naz of the Wind Strikes. She can move with her wind powers, progress, basically damage around from challenge to challenge and kind of set things up to be perfect. And yeah, they're both pretty awesome, so uh, we'll get to them in a second. But first, let's look at the new boss, the new Wellmaster. Scorn is his name, and he has his own unique Well deck, so you don't need anything from the other set. And as far as I can tell, the only things you can mix and match from the other sets are the heroes, the characters themselves. I think you always have to face a specific Wellmaster and their Well deck. I don't think you can kind of combine those. But there will be four challenges available at a time. They're supposed to actually be like in a cross pattern around the boss, but it's not <laughs> easy to show them all on screen at the same time that way. Scorn has an ongoing ability, the Unblinking Eye. Each time you choose not to play an action card on your turn and you roll the black result on one of the four dice, you gain an exhaustion card, which is actually a pretty cool, I gotta say, negative ability because one of the ways I strategically dealt with a lot of cards in the first set of the game was by setting things up so that I would not even have to play an action card on my turn. And Scorn gives you a very negative effect if you do that and uh, things don't go your way. Though that's gonna be a little bit less scary with Fane in the set since he can roll things. But let's get into some of the basics of how the game is played for those who didn't watch the first video. So like I said, there'll be four challenges up at a time. Each challenge is red, blue, or green. Currently, we don't have any green. And they have a value in the upper left, which is how much progress you have to put on them to complete them. And then they have a reward and a failure penalty and sometimes other special effects along with some flavor text. And they'll also have keywords like obstacle here, which will sometimes interact with player cards. So this one needs six progress to be completed. If you complete it, the player who defeated it will get to flip their lantern, which is a super powerful one use card that then flips back over until you can activate it again. And if you fail, you lose a single progress. How you're actually going to win the game is by going through the entire well deck. And when you get to the bottom, you get to fight the boss and their guardians. But you start out with three cards in a discard pile off the top of the deck. And many cards, like this Vacant Throne with two and this Bound Prisoner with three, will get you to discard cards blindly off the top of the deck because you're trying to get through the entire deck uh, to get to the boss. And then cards will also have other effects, like I said. So this one says, if there are two other copies of the obelisks in play, lose the game. So as long as I leave that there, it is a ticking time bomb. Whenever your turn ends and some cards have been defeated, you're going to refill from the top of the deck. So you should always have four available. But let's get to how tackling one of these actually works. So the active player, because you do take turns, can play one action card. Now, as I said, you don't have to play an action card, but if you want to play one, it needs to match the color of the card that you are challenging. Now, some cards will have multiple colors, like Charismatic is both blue and green, so it could be used for Scorn's Vault. Some cards are white, wild, so they can be used, so Haunted by the Past could be used for this one. But cards that are just red or green, like Team Player, Army Training, Good Survival Instincts, none of those could be played on this one at all. So let's say, I don't know, that I tried Charismatic. So I would be getting three progress already. 
And then they'll have special powers and things that might modify stuff. And then in cooperative play or two-handed play like I'm doing, every other player can play up to two boosts. It's the exact same thing. You're still playing cards from your hand, but you're only paying attention to the values and colors on the bottom. And they only have special powers if the bottom has a special power. So like this stuff would not apply. So here with Scorn's Vault, uh, if Naz can boost with white or blue, but could not boost with Tough as Nails or with Knockout. And like if she boosted with Surround, she would add plus two progress. If she boosted with Leadership, she would add plus three. And finally, you roll these four dice. Three of them have the three different colors, each represented twice. So this would have been a really good roll because this would give two more progress toward a blue challenge. And then this die is 50% white faces and 50% black faces. But yeah, if you get the white face, that's a wild, so that'd be one more progress. If you get the black face, it's usually nothing unless a card says it does something extra like Scorn's uh, ongoing eye ability does. So here, if I had played, let's just, uh, I don't know. let's say I'd played Charismatic 3, plus Leadership 3 boost, but she didn't boost again, even though she can boost twice, plus 1, 2, 3 that match blue, I would have gotten 9 progress and solved it straight up. So I would have gotten whatever the starred bonus is, which is indicated down here. Uh, but if I'd failed, if I'd only put like 8 progress on it, then I would have taken 2 damage. And damage to your party is one of the most common negatives, and it is a shared resource. We start with 10, indicated by the die. So here we would tick down to 8, and if you go to 0, you fail, as you might imagine. The other main way to lose the game is through exhaustion cards. So you don't draw cards at the end of your turn unless a card effect lets you draw. So you're going to be slowly running out of cards. And at the start of any of your turns, and you have to do this if you are completely out of cards, you can choose to exhaust yourself. You draw one of Scorn's unique six cards. This is a new deck of exhaustion cards with their own effects. And many of these will mess you up in different ways. And also, if you get too many of them, you'll lose the game. So you can lose through having to draw new hands too many times, getting exhausted. And you can lose through running out of health. And mentioning exhaustion, that is the penalty if I try to do an action without playing an action card and roll the 50-50 chance of getting a black face. I will get an exhaustion card straight up, which is the equivalent of drawing seven cards for my characters. So long story short, I'm going to try to never <laughs> not play an action card on my turn. Now, when you put progress on a challenge, you mark it with these uh, tokens. And if a card is not completed the first time, you suffer the negative. But then, you know, the, the next time you take a turn, you could go after the exact same card and finish the progress. So progress builds up unless a card says otherwise. All right, those are pretty much all the rules for Kinfire Delve. And uh, welcome if you skipped all of that because you already saw the first video and already know how the game is played. Let's uh, get to it. So to look at my first challenge options. I've got Scorn's Vaults, which are a nine blue. We'll take two damage, which is pretty darn rough if we fail. The vault, there's nothing behind this wall. Yes, but that's not where this door leads. So if completed, we can either get rid of a exhaustion card or progress five through the deck. Both of those are great. That's a pretty high value one. The obelisk I already showed, it's only a six, pretty easy to get rid of. If we succeed, we get to flip uh, the person's lantern, which is great. If we fail, we only lose one progress, which is really not that bad. <laughs> and if we just leave it hanging around, then we could lose the game automatically. These obelisks are gathering power for some purpose, Fane. I can feel it in the air. So we probably want to... I feel like that might be the first one I kill. Now, this one is really interesting. This is a new uh, set of three cards for Scorn. So it says Vacant Throne. It's an eight. Uh, you progress two if you succeed. You take a damage if you fail. It says, if failed, discard this challenge. You only get a one shot at it. You can't uh, beat it otherwise. And it says, if completed, set this challenge aside. If the Broken Crown and Shattered Scepter have also been completed, you win. Because from what I gather looking through the deck... It seems like Scorn is sort of a tragic figure who is actually trying to, like, fight for justice and do good things. Uh, but he kind of, like, lost his way. Sounds sort of Dark Souls, Elden Ringish to me. <laughs> so, yeah, if we can get lucky, because you're not going to see every card. Remember, a lot of cards are getting discarded blindly as you progress through the deck. But if we get lucky and all three of these things come out and we can defeat them all, we could win the game without ever fighting Scorn. So, I don't know, it's worth a try. And we still get two progress if we defeat it. And then finally, Bound Prisoner. This is a very common deck a card. I think there's three copies of this in each color. It has uh, three progress down, one damage you take it. Oh, <laughs> sometimes they talk, but the red ones specifically have some demon on their mouth. If there is excess progress on this challenge when it's completed, attach this card to score and after completing it. So a lot of cards are going to attach themselves to the Wellmaster. And there are three different versions of the Wellmaster, and you randomly choose one at the beginning of the game. And some of them care about having attached cards and some don't. So you're never 100% sure if this kind of effect is going to matter or not. But yeah, if we defeat this guy with eight progress, we get to delve down three, but he'll go on to score. And so we want to like find a way to do exactly seven. So yeah, I'm thinking uh, Obelisk is probably my first choice here. 
And looking at Naz, her special ability is at the start of each of my turns, I can move one progress from any challenge to any other challenge, which is pretty nice. Because as an example of how this might help us, I could get the bound prisoner to six and like be safely underneath their value and then move a token from somewhere else to him to get him to seven and finish him and not have any danger of attaching it to scorn. Or I could move a bunch of progress from other cards to the vacant throne and just let it build up and then get it in one go since it will get discarded if I fail. So lots of ways to use this. But right now it does nothing because we have no progress. <laughs> All right. So what do we have? We have tough as nails. Nice try. My turn next. Okay, ignore any damage you suffer on this turn. It's a two red or plus one for boost. Leadership. After this action, if it was boosted, ooh, I get a uh, lantern flip or lose an exhaustion. That's amazing. Although it's only a one, <laughs> so I'm probably not going to survive on whatever check I do it with. Inevitable is just a three red blue, but it's plus three versus a combat card if I boost with it. Surround is a two or a four if it's boosted. Naz has a lot of cool cards that like care about whether she was boosted or not. Uh, Calm under fire. If you suffer any damage this turn, draw one, draw one card for each damage you suffer. Well, that's pretty cool. Knockout. Before this action, you may discard a challenge with progress on it. Discarding a challenge does not uh, give you its reward, but it also gets rid of like a really nasty one. So that's pretty awesome. Ooh, especially with her power. She can move a single challenge to some super nasty thing I never want to try, and then just butt it out of there. <laughs> and quick thinking, if you fail a puzzle, ignore the penalty. Ooh. So I got kind of two main ideas here. I could do surround against the obelisks. That'd be two, and if Fane boosts me once, it'll be a four. So very good chance that we'll just complete it straight up. Or alternatively, we could do quick thinking with Scorn's Vaults, which is a two damage. It's pretty bad. But with here too, if you fail a puzzle, ignore the penalty, because that's a puzzle. It's the only puzzle out. We got one of each. Puzzle, obstacle, trap, and combat. Uh, if we failed it, we wouldn't suffer at all. And maybe if Fane boosts me a little bit, we could get at least halfway there and then like start moving some progress around. Um, no, for now, though, let's go for the uh, the shore thing. So let's try out the obelisk. I'm going to say that she is surrounding. And let's see what Fane's cards are for the moment. So as I said, Fane will have some cards with a star on them. You'll see it here on Haunted by the Past and Intuition. After any secret rolls, I can discard a star card from hand to let them re-roll. And then the cool thing is he gets to redraw. So he's not even uh, using up his cards for that. He just gets a replacement. So nice little ability there. And he's got charismatic. Before rolling, you may discard or draw up to three cards. This action's value is reduced by one per card you drew. So that's a great one if we get an enemy card that has like a really minor negative effect. I can basically just use that to draw three cards. That's like half of an exhaustion right there. Uh, Haunted by the Past. If you roll a black, this card's value is zero instead of five. <laughs> oh man, and even their boost is the same thing. It's a plus five or a plus zero if you roll a black. Oh, that's that's awesome. It's like uh, my own personal score and negative trait. Uh, army training, three. Before this action, you may discard a challenge that you aren't attempting. Dang, this is great. Between knockout and army training, I can really get rid of some nasty things. A team player, before this action, choose a seeker to draw two cards. Those cards may be kept or used to boost this action regardless of color. Great, I love card draw. Uh, mana strike, plus one per star in my hand. Ooh, so building them up will make it good. This one is a two or four against a trap. This one is a three. If attempting a puzzle, you may re-roll once for free. Okay. So right now we're attempting the obstacle. I want to boost once to trigger surrounds bonus. It is a blue card. So I can boost with anything over here. This is an obstacle. So I don't really want to use the ones that are especially good. And I want to use Haunted by the Past. I'm kind of looking at Mana Strike. Like it's pretty good, but not amazing. Right now it would only be a four. Well, a four is really good though. And it's only a plus two boost. Whereas if I do charismatic, I will automatically succeed at the challenge no matter what I roll. Okay, we'll do charismatic. So that's a two, plus two from charismatic, plus two if this action is boosted. So it's a six. You still need to roll, although in this case, it won't do anything if I fail or succeed. But, you know, for some effects, ah, I would have gotten plus two more. So <laughs> definitely wasted a bit there. All right, so this one gets moved to the completed challenge thing. That's different than the discard pile because these can never come back, whereas discarded cards uh, with effects like this that send you back up can come back. And I get to flip Naz's Lantern. And again, I can use this as an action card on her turn. You can't boost with it. And it's really powerful, and then it flips back down until you get it again. Alter the balance. If completed, attach this challenge you're attempting to this card. Copies of any challenges attached to this card are immediately discarded from play. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> so she can just kind of set up uh, instant defeats. And I think there's only three copies of the Obelisk total, so I don't think I'm in danger if any more come out. Icy Shackles. This is a trap. Seven. 
actions may be boosted with one fewer card. Okay, so we can only boost once while that's in effect. We want to probably get rid of that. Let's see, for this turn I'm thinking, let's do the army training, maybe discard the icy shackles. So this one says, before this action, you may discard a challenge you aren't attempting. So boop, and get out of here. And I'm trying the bound prisoner. One damage for failing isn't that big of a deal. Although I could play inevitable to add plus three since it's a combat. Oh wait, no, 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 crud, because I would almost certainly go over. It's a very good chance I would roll more than one. Kind of the average is like one and a half or two, so you'll tend to get like one or two. So I, I would be worried about going over the bound prisoner if I boosted with this. So for now, I think I might just not boost and might just see how I do and tank the damage. Okay, so three plus uh, just one from the white. So that's four progress on the bound prisoner, and we take one damage. Brings us down to nine out of ten. We draw for Fane, Relentless Hound. This challenge can't be discarded. Well, you're annoying. <laughs> All right, so we come back to Naz's turn, and first you can move a progress somewhere. But honestly, the one I would most like to get rid of is the Relentless Hound, but I can't. Maybe I give up on the chance of getting, like, the auto victory and move one progress over to the Vacant Throne to discard later. And I think since I have it, I should just go in and use Altar. So if I can complete a challenge, I can then discard... I guess the Scorn's Vaults one is a pretty high difficulty challenge. That'd be a nice one to get rid of. So that'll be a five white means if I want to complete it straight up, I would need like four more. Now, again, I'm likely to roll one or two, so I would need at least two to help. Ooh, how about this? Intuition. That'd be plus three versus puzzles. Okay, so again, maybe kind of overkill. Maybe I should be saving more of my cards. But as we noted, I have ways to redraw. So I need just one extra blue. And hey, I got two. Okay, cool. So Alter gets flipped, but I attach Scorn's Vaults to it. And from now on, any time a Scorn's Vault comes out, it'll just get discarded for free. And I can either get rid of one exhaustion card or delve five deep. So, yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and delve since I don't have any exhaustion yet. One, two, three, four, five. And then we get replacement. Another bound prisoner. This time a blue one. No, let me go, Scorn. Let me go. Uh, but they all have the exact same effect. The same uh, positive and negative. Although I think, not 100% sure on this, I would assume that for Alter, where it says copies of any challenges attached to this card... I would think it would have to be like the exact challenge. So like if I attach the blue bound prisoner to this, it would only discard blues for free and not all nine copies of the different colors that can show up. All right, so now we're back to Fane. I'm thinking maybe finishing off this guy or going for the vacant throne. Got good survival instincts. That would be a four versus the vacant throne. And it's got one progress on it. So we would need three more. That seems doable. Or I could do team player, maybe on the bound prisoner. That'd be two, and then I'd get to have Naz draw two cards, and then she could boost with either of them not caring about the color. That would also be really good. Although still with the Bound Prisoner, I have to worry about going too high. Hmm. Well, yeah, let's try Let's try team player on the Bound Prisoner. I'll have Naz draw two, and she could boost with these no matter what the color is. Oh, geez. Zero. Duel of Otter, because this is a four green, and this action cannot be boosted, so she has to fight alone. Eh. The sound is a little too strong for that at the moment. Or Dauntless, discard if you would be reduced to zero health to be reduced to one instead, then draw a card. That's cool, but kind of limited, but the three is great. So she could boost with one. That would get them to three plus a three out of their six. And then if we rolled too well, maybe she's not going to boost at all. Maybe we're going to take our chances that we could roll a two boost, a two plus two. That would finish it without going over. And then, you know, I still have Haunted by the Past, a discard to uh, re-roll card. Maybe I can do that if I roll too well or too poorly. All right, so here we go. I want to get two. I want to get two. And that's zero. <laughs> so let's use Haunted by the Past, discard that, and we get to draw a replacement. Oh, which is also a uh, re-roll one. So I guess I could do it again if I really need to. Come on. Come on. Oh, is that it? Yes. White and red adds up to two. So we directly defeat this person, uh, which means that... We did not go over. It does not get attached to Scorn, and we get to delve three. All right, and then we got geez, so many bound prisoners. This time it's the green one. Who's there? Please stay back. <laughs> All right, this is great. Only a few cards left, just three, so might need to exhaust him soon. I wish I hadn't used that card that let me uh, do, like, a zero card, but draw three. All right, well, you know what? Naz is going to be a little sassy, and we're going to move the one progress from the vacant throne to the Blue bound prisoner. Oh, and I guess it's good to have like variety of colors. So let's go for the green one. And then she's going to knock out the throne, baby. 
She's going to try it. <laughs> We're only going to get one chance at this. Uh, knock out the throne, and Fane is going to support with this. So we've got plus three versus traps. So that's six out of eight, but knockout. Discard a challenge with progress on it. Roar! Get out of here. I don't need to save you. I just need to punch you. <laughs> so yeah, we got six. We need to get two or more. We don't mind or more this time. Two or more. We have one reroll from Fane if we need it. We're looking for reds and whites again. Reds and whites. Darn it. Okay. Fane, reroll. And it redraws. Oh, and there's another one. I love getting lots of rerolls. We'll just cycle through them. Dang it. Uh, okay. Reroll again. I think you can do it more than once. Oh, another reroll. <laughs> well, this is a reroll forever. Gosh darn it. Okay. I, yeah. Hopefully I can do this more than once. It sounds like I can. It says after a secret rolls. Okay. And I did not draw a reroll this time. So this is the last chance. And here we go. Yes. Freaking yes. Okay. God, that was, again, the average is directly between one or two successes. So the chance of me getting uh, one so many times, not super high. Okay. So uh, that was three, six plus two, eight. So we defeat this. It goes off to the side in case we get the other two and win automatically. And we delve twice, which maybe wasn't worth all that effort. Uh, oh, we got an event. I'll explain that in a second. And we got another obelisk. Oh, it's another blue one. Are there red and green ones? Ah, I wish I had paid attention when I played the other times. But yeah, before we go to Fane's turn, let me explain what events are. Events you can choose as the card you challenge, but you don't like really do anything with it. Instead, you just resolve its ability. So it says, Scorn may not realize it, Naz, but the stockade is a powder keg waiting to blow. Complete all combats automatically, then lose half your remaining hearts, round it up, and discard this card. Which, <laughs> half your remaining hearts, round it up. That's not okay. That's not okay. That would be five hearts right now. So that's clearly better to do when you're already low on hearts and also better to do when you have all three combats, which that one I am actually kind of close to. But yeah, for now, we're not going to do that. What we are going to do, ooh, I really want to complete the obelisks with Fane. Because first of all, look, he's got blue so he can do the challenge. And if he gets his uh, lantern sustain, after this action, draw four cards. So he's going to very much delay us having to get our first, uh, uh, what's it called, exhaustion card. So what are our options here? Blade Storm. If you would complete this challenge, you're attempting with excess progress. Ooh, move the excess progress to any other challenge. That's really good. Or Mana... Oh, gosh. Mana Strike. Did I Did I have another copy of this? Did I just never use it? <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so this is not going to be good at all. Uh, plus one per thing in my hand, which is none. So yeah, we'll do Blade Storm. We'll do Blade Storm. So that's three already. Okay, then what can Naz do to boost it? We really don't mind boosting this one a bunch because we're going to get to move the extra progress anyway. So I could do like... Dauntless and Calm Under Fire, although Calm Under Fire lets me draw extra cards. Uh, but yeah, let's try it. I know it's kind of overkill. And actually, it's such a meh negative we suffer. But no, I want I want Fane to be the one to do it so he can get his lantern. Okay, forget it. I'm going to boost it twice. It's probably a bad idea. That gets me to plus five already. Looking for blues. Oh, wow, I only got one. So I don't get the benefit from the blade storm placing the extra progress. But Fane will get their lantern. That's what I was really going for. Who's our new friend? Oh my god. Trap the oubliette. <laughs> the value of each action is reduced by one while this is in play, which means uh, the, the actions, like the main thing we're doing, the boost is minus one. Strangers, I beg you, what year is it? How long has Scorn kept me here? You know what I wish I had done? I wish I'd kept some of my uh, my cards that were like, <laughs> discard something. God, I feel dumb. Oh, well, that's fine. That's fine. I want to get Naz's uh, lantern. So let's do leadership. It's going to be a zero <laughs> because of the oubliette. But after this action, if it was boosted, I can uh, give her her lantern or get rid of an exhaustion, which we don't have any of yet. And then we'll go ahead and boost it with mana strikes. So this is a one right now. Ugh. <laughs> um, let's go after the bound prisoner since he only does one damage when we inevitably fail. All right, so it's a one. And was it a blue? Oh, that was actually great. So we get four progress on him. That means we can also move it around with Naz later. And because she did the boosted action, she's going to get her lantern. We do suffer our second damage going down to eight. All right, and Fane does not have a lot of options. <laughs> Fane can do this or nothing. And that's going to be a four right now because of the oubliette. Um, hmm. Let's try to take on the Hound, I guess. Because I don't want to do the revolution. That would still lose us four life, which is ridiculous. And we'd be wasting the progress already on the prisoner. So how well can Naz boost? Cruddly the only... Ooh, actually, never mind. There we go. Perfect. Uh, this one is a white. I don't know if I noticed that before. Plus three versus combat. So that's actually going to be a seven. Slightly overkill. Seven because of the oubliette reducing sustains one. But yeah, that means we only need a single success. And do we get it? Okay, we got one too many. That's fine. 
So we get three progress from defeating the Hound. We're, I don't know, not quite halfway, I think. And then Fane is going to get to draw four cards. Yay! Let's see what else comes out. Another blue bound prisoner. Ooh. If Naz uses uh, Alter to defeat him, even though it would be overkill and it would get attached to Scorn, we can discard that one for free. And then if the other one ever comes out, because I think there's three of each of those, we can discard the other one for free. That seems too good to not do, right? So yeah, at the start of Naz's turn, let's move this to the Oubliette, <laughs> I guess. And then she'll do Alter on the Bound Prisoner. So currently it's five minus one is four. So if we roll no boost, it'll exactly defeat him and we won't suffer the penalty. <laughs> Unlikely, but it's possible. Definitely not going to boost with uh, Fade here. See, I want to roll not white and not blue. Uh, not great odds. Oh, dang it. Dang it. <laughs> I could uh, use Fade did get one reroll, but I'm not going to waste it here. Well, let's hope this is not one of the cards that Scorn benefits from. So we get that. Or actually, wait a second. Hold on. Ooh. There's no... Attach this card to Scorn after completing it. Attach the challenge you're attempting this card. Uh, so yeah, which one wins out? We're going to say we win out, right? It'd be dumb if Alter... So maybe Alter steals the prisoner before Scorn can steal it, I say, maybe. <laughs> but yes, now this copy is immediately discarded. Oh, and we defeated them, so we get three more delving. Cool. So maybe I cheated slightly there, but I feel good about it. There's two more things. The courtroom and... Oh, shoot. The Shattered Scepter. Uh, I've completed, set this challenge aside. If the broken crown of the vacant throne, that's the second one. Um, and then what's this? The courtroom. We, oh, we heal three? Oh, that's cool. Well, you don't get too many healing effects. Heal three if we complete it. But if failed, attach this card to score. And, oh, crud. And we take three damage. So it's really like an either or like verdict decision there. Mm, that's a little too scary, I think. But hey, let's come back around to Fane. See our new cards. We've got Fate's Lament. Discard the start of any turn to regain one health. And then we gain additional health for every two blue cards of Seeker's Discard. That's pretty expensive. It is a, uh, it's only a reroll card right now. Perfect Balance. It's a four if he's attempting an obstacle, and also boost against obstacles as well. Grand Destiny. After this action, we discard a... Ooh, we discard a reroll to get his lantern back. He's never gonna need to exhaust himself. After this action, if you have any stars left in your hand, you may return this card to your hand. So I want to play one of those. Uh, crud, though, on what? I'm afraid to do the courtroom. Naz has no way to boost a blue. She can barely boost the green. This is not great. Maybe we just do the oubliette? Because it is really messing us up. And yeah, we unfortunately got rid of the cards that would have discarded it. So yeah, I think maybe so. And then we don't really need to boost. So I'll go and do Grand Destiny uh, just for a two. And maybe we'll roll a bunch. Try to get rid of that annoying thing. And okay, that's pretty good. So that's two plus two, four. So we're now a third of the way to doing it. And then I can discard Fate's Lament, which has a star, to get back our uh, Fane's Lantern. And I come back to Naz. There is not a single red that'll work with. This one's good against puzzles, but all we have is obstacles and traps. Darn it. Duel of Honor is fine, but I can't boost with it. Quick thinking, if I fail a puzzle, ignore the penalty, but there aren't any puzzles. I think the best maybe is to just Duel of Honor the Oubliette and keep trying to get rid of it, I guess. Well, alternatively, hmm. Huh. Could do quick thinking versus the courtroom. We'd only be a one, but then this is plus three or so. That would get us to a four. That's not enough. Oh, I guess I could also use winning smile. That would be boosting five, six. We'd have no reroll, but we have a decent chance. <sighs> now without a reroll, that's too, that's too iffy. So yeah, for now, let's just uh, do Duel of Honor versus the Oubliette, and then I think Naz might have to take an exhaustion soon. So that can't be boosted. Naz is honorably uh, trying to cut that person out of their cage. It's only a three right now. Hopefully get some uh, successes. Okay, two more. So that's five more. So we're at, what is that, 10 out of 15? All right, and then, <laughs> I don't know, man. Let's sustain against the Oubliette on Fade's turn. Not boosted. So that's four. One success will finally finish this thing. And then Fane will get more cards. That's maybe the really important part. Hey, there we go. So that's five total. Get the heck out of here. God, you suck. <laughs> Gotta remember to keep my uh, discarded card effects until that comes out next time. But Fane gets four more cards. Hey, he's pretty much loaded for bear now, although... Oh, man, we have no rerolls in here. What do we have? Flank. Boost give this action an extra plus one each. That's pretty cool. Uh, good survival instincts. Plus two for attempting a trap. That'd be a four against the scepter. That's pretty good. Winning Smile. After this action, if you have any, that's the one that comes back. Nope. Uh, yeah, we already had that one. Bolt of Confusion. If you fail a combat, ignore the penalty. Okay, we don't have any combats right now. And then that's also good against combats. Crud, we need to get rid of some of these things. 
Oh, here, we got to draw a new card. And it is a combat, the Parliament. Uh, each time you roll a black, suffer one damage. Get the fridge out of here. Why do I use my discard power on these weaklings? Uh, but four progress is good because I haven't gotten any in a while. Okay, we got to go against the Parliament. So the only one that uh, Naz can do is quick thinking. Yay, totally wasting the puzzle bonus there. So that's just a two blue. Ooh, but then Fane can do, get it to five with this blue uh, or white boost, plus three versus combat. And let's go all the way. I don't want to lose two health to seven with winning smile boost. We have no reroll, but we only need one. Oh, we got two. Cool. So Parliament's defeated. We'll delve four. four. Now we're definitely past the halfway point. Okay, and we get Trial of the Heart. What weighs so heavily upon your heart, prisoner? If failed, discard your hand and attach this card to scorn. <laughs> oh my gosh, seven delving? <sighs> now I will note, if Naz tries it with Tough as Nails on her turn, the attaching to scorn part sucks, but discarding a hand would not affect because she doesn't have a hand. <laughs> so I might just do that to get rid of it. But first it's Fane's turn. And the problem is we cannot... Naz can't boost anything. Oh, except the Trial of the Heart, I guess. Um, could we defeat it? Seven? It's not a trap, it's a puzzle. Yeah, and the only card that Fane could try would be that. So we would be three <laughs> versus a seven. No thanks. No thanks. Uh, none of them are combats. So the best we can do is plus four versus an obstacle. That would still be... Gosh, man. All right, you know what? You know what? Yeah, I think the Shattered Scepter just does one damage. Yes, if we fail, it gets a scarred and we lose our chance at the auto win, but I think that's the best we got right now. Now, I'm going to use a card just because I don't have the 50-50 chance of score and messing us up so much. I think flank is the least special of Fane's cards. So, hey, we're going to flank the Shattered Scepter. Seems like a great strategic decision. Hey, we got plus one. It goes away and we take a damage anyway. We are down to seven. All right, give me something better. Oh, God, what is this? Living Bastille. If failed, flip other challenges face down. Face down challenges can't be attempted. Discard or have progress added to them. If completed or discarded, flip challenges face up again. Oh, okay. So if you try to fight it once, you just got to keep on fighting. God, it has eight progress, but it's a 12. And Naz only has the red. Now, the sucky thing is that uh, you have to exhaust yourself at the beginning of your turn to draw a new hand. So if Naz plays this card right now, she's not going to be able to help Fane on his turn. Because hmm. she could go against the Living Bastille, uh, and Fane could, like, boost it with that i guess uh, now let's do the trial of the heart thing let's see what i planned okay so i'm gonna uh, attack trial of the heart don't even need to roll i automatically fail so um the only negative is i have to discard my hand but naz had no hand and then this gets attached to score and so hopefully that won't boost him too much and what's our new thing scales of justice if you have excess progress on this challenge when completed fail it and discard all progress from it instead which means you lose two cards Blah. darn it it's a puzzle I have a good thing it's a trap, none of which exists anymore. I have, uh, if you fail a combat, ignore the penalty, but it's not red for the only combat I can fight. And I got plus two for attempting an obstacle, which is the courtroom, but since Naz can't boost, ah, oh, y'all. This is a hard game. This is a hard game sometimes. You know, I could... <laughs> oh, gosh, I didn't realize. The revolution says complete all combats, so this is kind of dumb. But I could let it do four damage to us. It would complete the Living Bastille, which would let us go down eight. And then it would clear out two spots. And Naz would have cards again. <laughs> this is so stupid, y'all. I'm going to do it. Ah! <laughs> Revolution, Living Bastille, Riva. <laughs> okay, so that goes away. That guy goes away. Uh, we dig down eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And wow, look at this. Look at all the cards. We don't have very many cards left. Of course, we also don't have very much life to deal with anything. We're at three. But uh, hey, it was something new. We got a new event. The Master Key. Keep this card. Attach it to Scorn instead of interacting with a well card on your turn to complete all challenges with Vaults, Lock, Oubliette, Prisoner, Shackles, Pillory, or Mask in their time. That's right. That's why I forgot. The Oubliette seemed easy last time because I had this thing and I just completed it right away. Uh, right now, it would help with nothing. Now, the nice thing is it does count as your turn to take it. So like if we ever really don't want Naz or Fane to take a turn, we can just like grab that as our turn. Speaking of Naz, start of turn. Here we go. And we're getting our first exhausted card. These ones are fun because they are keyed after each of the characters, even the two that aren't re uh, released yet. So if discarded and traumatized are also in play, lose the game, which they aren't. If Naz plays Orcish Senses and doesn't discard any traps, lose the game. So just like, it's a very rare uh, thing that could happen. But we go to the exact same number of cards we started with, which is seven. There we go. But yeah, these exhaustion cards in the new set are kind of like fun thematically. I like them. So it's like we've got, oh, here's the one they talked about, Orca Senses. 
So three, before this action, draw three cards from the well deck. Discard any traps and return the rest of the deck in any order. So if I did that and there weren't traps, I would lose the game. So yeah, I think I'm going to boost with that. Rush, after this action, draw a card. Love that. Shattering Blow, before this action, discard a card. If you cannot discard this action instead of resolving it. But it's a five, that's lovely. Uh, Warrior's Instinct. Before attempting a combat, draw two cards. Oh, that's so good. Uh, Fist of the Wind. If you fail a combat, ignore the penalty. Love that. Probe. While this card is on top of your discard pile, any played actions gain plus one of their value. Whoa, that's good. it would be even better in a three- or four-player game where I could like not boost for a while and just boost everybody with that. Intimidate. Don't roll this turn. Add one progress to every challenge. Then... Uh, Delve two for every challenge you complete. Oh, so if I get a bunch within one, like with her wind ability, that'd be good. All right, now what does she actually want to go for? Um, got a big red. At the end of each turn, remove two progress from this challenge, and it does two damage, which would get us pretty much... So we literally can't do the courtroom, because <laughs> we'll probably die if we tried it. Yeah, I was going to say I could try Fist of Wind. If you fail a combat, ignore the penalty against Looming Statue, but there's a good chance that I would do like three or four or five progress and then lose two of it. How about this? What if we do probe on the courtroom and just have Fane go wild? That'd be plus three because it's an obstacle. And then that's the plus one because it's not a trap. So that'd be a six versus eight. So around a 50-50 chance. We die if we uh, <laughs> if we don't succeed. In fact, <laughs> I might just die right here. But hey, let's make it even more likely to succeed. Now we just need to get a one because it's three plus six plus seven. But it's Orcish Senses, so we don't have to look at the top three cards. And if there's a trap there, we lose from our exhaustion card. <laughs> okay, whatever. I'm going to do it. So first of all, I need at least one blue or white or I die. Okay, I got that. That's the first step of the uh, the problem. All right. And then here we go. How many cards is it? Draw three cards from the well deck. Discard any traps. Mm. Obstacle. Mm. Combat. You piece of crap. <laughs> no! <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, were there any traps left? There were no traps left in the entire deck! Ah! <laughs> I mean, I could have clearly done things that were less... Ah, it would have healed me three. I would have been like in a really good spot. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> All right, well, here, even though we lost, let me show you what the, uh, the boss looks like. Dang it, dang it, dang it. So which version of Scorn would we have had? Would it have mattered uh, that he had a thing under him? Three strikes. So 25. Oh, this one is stupid. <laughs> I didn't play this one, but I looked at it. Look, I will allow you three strikes to defeat me. After that, you belong to me. So if you fail to kill him three times, you lose the game. There's nothing else. He doesn't care that a card was attached to him. He doesn't care. Like usually with the boss, if you roll a black die on the dice, there's a negative effect. But he doesn't mind at all. And they always have these four guardians you have to defeat before you can attack them. And then once you defeat them, you flip them over and they make uh, him vulnerable, but add some other stuff. So the red one is reprisal. Each time you put one or more progress on this challenge, take a damage. That would not have been easy for me. If you complete or discard this challenge, flip it over. Ooh, if you discard it, flip it over. And this one says each time a challenge inflicts damage, it inflicts one extra damage. The witness, if you complete or discard this challenge, flip it over. And you know, this one doesn't even like cause any penalty, which is nice. But uh, if you roll the black from then on, it counts as minus one to your roll. Justice has plus three difficulty per face down challenge in place. So you really want to do it first. And then you can use blue, but all challenges have plus two difficulty. So scoring to become a 27. Uh, so yeah, you want to do that one first, but you don't want to do that one first. And then finally, implacable is the only one that doesn't uh, let you attack him in something. But while it's active, while a black is rolled, every secret must discard a card at random. Yeah. He's a lot. He's a lot. <laughs> so far, uh, I don't think I played uh, once before, and I don't think I beat him then either. I mean, here, let me show you his other cards. So Field of Infinity is 20. If you roll a black, which remember is a 50-50 chance, you get minus one card. If failed and you roll a black, which means if you don't kill him, discard one extra card for each card attached to Scorn. So here it would be tough to have too many cards attached. You'd like be losing your entire hand. And then the final defense Plus five difficulty for every card attached to score, and so he would have been a 20 with how I went in, and he's a 50-50 chance to hurt you. So kind of like the most innocuous one. The three strikes one is tough. You need to like really have your biggest cards, your lanterns. Um, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. That was the new set for Kinfire Delve. I think it's harder than the first set, honestly, which I like. I do want to say I very much like that. It does mean that I would probably recommend buying the first one first to get used to the game. But I love that this boss feels tougher so I can play on a harder mode if I want. Because right now there is not any 
that I'm aware of at least official way to like vary up the difficulty setting. But I continue to like the card play. I hope you saw how cool it was, even for multi-handing. I love this co-op and it's good uh, three to four player. I mean, you have fewer cards, but since you can boost on everybody's turn, you're still involved in things. Fane and Naz are cool. I'm not as good with them yet as uh, the Seekers from the original box. But yeah, I think this is an awesome one. Definitely check it out when it's coming around. They also have a competitive game coming, like Kinfire. Oh, what was it called? It's... Uh, can fire like conflagration, can fire, uh, it's like a C word or an E word uh, <laughs> that means to meet. I don't know. I'll put it on the screen as I'm talking right now. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. And I'm going to close it out with a big thank you to our highest tier Patreon supporters. That's Minkus, J. Willie MF, Steve Wren, and Pedro Lucas. So grateful to all of you and all our amazing supporters out there. Good gaming and I'll see you at the next stop.